need to defeat the globalists. I mean, it's just imagine. That's why they're so scared by accusing Trump of being a Russian agent, even though it's all come out, it's lies. It ends us having a good relationship with Russia, which we need just from an economic perspective. It's another nationalist country. It's got way more resources than we do. We should be absolutely working with Russia. And then they, they say I'm a Russian agent because I say that this is an incredible time to be alive. What's coming up? What's coming up in the next hour, my friend? No, you're exactly right, Alex. This is the new McCarthyism. If you're not for nuclear war with the Russians over Syria, well, then you must be a traitor to your, the country of your birth. It's outrageous. Uh, it's particularly insulting for me, Alex, because my, uh, my mother's people are Hungarian. Uh, my mother's people were crushed on the streets of Budapest in 1956. So don't tell me about Russians. Uh, you're exactly right. It's hard to keep up with the news. That picture you showed of uh, the North Korean tyrant with his generals. Look carefully at the pictures of those generals. Notice how all their sleeves are too long. That's the worst tailoring I've ever seen. Uh, we are at the brink, clearly, uh, of, a, of a national, or I should say an international upheaval. That's a good point, though. Communists can't even produce clothes. I could make a better suit than that. Yeah, no, their sleeves are always too long. It is a sign of Chinese tailoring. They must be sending to China to have their uniforms made wholesale. Uh, here's, I think, the real point, which is very much like Ronald Reagan the North Koreans, the Chinese are about to find out that Donald Trump is not a cream puff. He is not a pushover like Jimmy Carter or Bill Clinton or Barack Obama. He's tough as nails, perhaps the toughest man I've ever met. And there is ice water in his veins when he is on the attack and he's standing up for something he believes in. So they, they're about to confront uh, an international leader who's unlike anyone they've ever dealt with before. Um, the ass kissing and the and the and the appeasement uh, of our international foes. Those days are over, my friend. And that's uh, why all the special interests are so mad. They're saying Trump's the pushover and controlled by foreigners because he's the only president in forever that actually isn't controlled by foreigners. Well, and big news today, uh, uh, carried by real clear politics. Congressman Adam Schiff of California now admits that there is no evidence of Russian collusion. It's about time. He has made specific accusations about me that, you know, I am itching to respond to. And so the House of Cards is forum. coming down. They now admit Susan Rice did illegally spy. Other people did it. I mean, th as you said a month ago or more, this is the new Watergate. Well, and uh, the left has said repeatedly, somebody's going to go to jail, somebody's going to go to jail in this whole Russia thing. They're absolutely right. Some people are going to go to jail, but they're the front line of Barack Obama's advisors and retainers who clearly were utilizing national surveillance information, intel information, for strictly political purposes. And that's a, a big no-no, as you know. Well, what else is coming up as I turn the baton over to you, my friend? Well, I want to talk about Steve Bannon uh, and the shift uh, of power, the internal struggle in the White House. As you know, we foreshadowed all of this yesterday with our discussion of Jared Kushner's text message channel to Joe Scarborough. So we're going to get back into that in just a few minutes. And by the way, our interview yesterday is big news. Uh, that's in hundreds of newspapers. And Roger Stone's about to make a lot more news. He's got more details. Uh, on that whole Custer situation with uh, the folks over at Scarborough Country. Welcome back to InfoWars. This is Roger Stone sitting in for my friend Alex Jones, and damn glad to be with you. Um, some very good news from my granddaughter, Caitlin, who tells me that she has just read online that the super blue fluoride toothpaste that my wife favors is now available in a bubble gum flavor for those who don't like the peppermint. Um, this would be particularly good for children, although my granddaughter is uh, grown. Uh, and anyone who understands, uh, you know, uh, oral health understands that gum health is directly tied to both heart disease uh, and heart attacks. So uh, not only is this the best whitening formula you can find, but it has certain health benefits as well. 
If you've ever seen a photograph of Mrs. Stone, you know she has a gleaming white smile, uh, and she swears by this product. So if you want to support the fight for freedom, uh, and if you want to keep the strong, the voice here at InfoWars strong, and if you want to gird us for the battle with Google and Facebook and those who would cut off our oxygen, please do yourself a favor, go to the InfoWars.com store uh, and uh, load up on the Super Blue Fluoride Toothpaste, now available in bubblegum flavor. Uh, it, this is a terrific product. The folks at InfoWars know I won't plug anything that I don't believe in, and the folks in my family swear by this product. Uh, yesterday, here on InfoWars.com, we revealed uh, a, a back channel by text between the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, uh, and the uh, rabid anti-Trump television commentator and former congressman, Joe Scarborough. Uh, and uh, my sources tell me that a number of the negative attacks by Scarborough on presidential assistant Steve Bannon uh, have been orchestrated and manipulated uh, by uh, Kushner. This is very disturbing to me because my experience with Ronald Reagan and before that with President Richard Nixon is that a White House staff that is divided, a White House staff that is not entirely focused on the president's agenda and how to move it forward will ultimately fail. We have seen this uh, in previous administrations. Uh, and in this particular case, I have no personal animus towards um, Jared Kushner. I think he's a very, very smart guy. I think he did a good job of helping his father-in-law win the presidency. But I disagree with the, I guess it was Forbes magazine cover that said, this is the man who elected Donald Trump. No. Donald Trump is the man who elected Donald Trump. There is no Karl Rove-like figure in Trump world. There never has been. It is most certainly not Roger Stone, nor is it Jared Kushner. The man with the courage, the man with the foresight, uh, the man who understood viscerally how angry the American people were and are, about the two-party duopoly and the political establishment that is taking this country down the drain in his acquiescence to the globalists, um, they uh, had certain vulnerabilities, certain saturation point that the American people had reached. Only Donald Trump saw this. The other 15 career politicians who opposed him for the nomination they did not see this, uh, this uh, tsunami coming. Only Donald Trump did. Uh, in any event, we have, again, proven to be correct here at InfoWars.com, predicting this White House uh, uh, contra attempts. Uh, and while Mr. Kushner has much on his plate, the China visit, uh, the entire question of Middle Eastern peace, I fear that he does not understand uh, either the InfoWars, Breitbart, Daily Caller, Tea Party, Liberty-based coalition that elected Donald Trump, uh, nor do I think he understands the looming threat by Google and Facebook and others who are actively seeking to choke off our oxygen uh, and end broadcasts, uh, or at least the reach of them, uh, uh, like the one you're watching right now. This is very real. I can tell you just by an examination of the uh, analytics of StoneColdTruth.com, where I recommend that you visit uh, to keep up with my political commentary, but they have a stranglehold on our logarithms. They are monkeying with them. Uh, the number of people we are reaching, the number of people who are retweeting um, is, uh, is being dwarfed compared to just a couple months ago. In the closing days of the presidential campaign, there were days that Infowars.com had 15, 18, 20 million viewers on all platforms, including Facebook Live, YouTube Live, of course, the Infowars site. 
Uh, and now they are seeking to ratchet down our reach. Now, if there's anyone who understands this, it has to be Stephen K. Bannon. Mr. Bannon is formerly at the helm of Breitbart News, vigorous, um, uh, I would say robust investigative journalism. Uh, no, it is not an anti-Semitic site. No, it is not a bigoted site. Uh, no, they are not Klansmen. Those are the lies of David Brock uh, and his posse of misfits. Um, they are the harbinger of the Trump victory. They are like Infowars.com, like Daily Caller, like Town Hall, like so many other fine sites. They're dedicated to the truth. Uh, and it is essential that Steve Bannon or others within the Trump White House make sure the president understands that this is an assault on his people. This is an assault on his voters. There is zero chance that the president can get reelected in 2020 if he chooses to run uh, it, it, with this kind of uh, subterfuge, this kind of subversion of what is now one of the major channels for communications in this country. Broadcast television is over, folks. The number of people watching is dwindling. The number of people who are skeptical about what they see being true uh, is soaring. This is also happening to cable news. CNN, Fox, they're in eclipse. Uh, they're being surpassed by net-based media. Uh, and that is why it is vitally important um, that the Trump administration examine the options for antitrust uh, actions against Google, uh, against the Silicon Valley crowd, that now seem to be making their way to New York to wine and dine Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Now, I am perhaps the world's largest fan of Ivanka Trump. She's an amazing woman, highly intelligent, very articulate, very decent, very kind, very approachable. And somehow she balances being a key advisor to her father, uh, running her own lines of business, which she has now left, being a mother, being a wife, being physically fit, being impeccably dressed. Uh, how she balances all these roles, I don't know. But there is no criticism implied. The crowd uh, around Google had their way uh, in the Obama White House. The reporting of Dr. Jerry Corsi here at Infowars.com have covered this issue perhaps better than anyone in the mainstream media or anyone else in alternative media. This is a lynching that is planned. This is an effort to choke off our oxygen. And the idea that Google would let people like David Brock, uh, you know, who is a, a left-wing hitman and a discredited one at that, uh, and Snopes, uh, for example, Snopes.com, make decisions as to what is and is not fake news. This is an incredible violation of our First Amendment rights. This is the end of free speech as we know it in this country. Uh, it may be the single most important element in terms of the long-term success of Donald Trump's presidency and whether or not he can make America great again. So uh, we are um, hopeful that Steve Bannon will put these issues in front of the president. We are hopeful that the boarding party from Google that even today is attempting to insert a stooge as head of the FTC uh, in the Trump administration, we are hopeful that all of their motives and shenanigans will be exposed. Uh, I thank you for welcoming us here on uh, InfoWars. We have so much more to talk about. The retreat of Adam Schiff, the congressman from California, who thought he was going to go to the U.S. Senate over my dead body, um, has got another thing coming. He's now, according to Real Clear Politics, in full retreat, admitting that there is no hard evidence, at least not yet, of any Russian collusion with the Trump campaign, something I have been saying now 
for numerous months to the derision of the fake news media like the Daily Beast. So uh, this is uh, very much uh, Russia Gate is something we're going to visit a little later on in the program because the uh, false attacks of Schiff and Senator Adam Warner and uh, pardon me, Senator Mark Warner and others simply must be addressed. Thanks for joining us here at Infowars.com and I'll be right back. Welcome back. And to InfoWars, I'm uh, your uh, pinch-hitting host, Roger Stone, stid, uh, sitting in for my friend Alex Jones. Alex Jones and InfoWars, both MVPs in the recent Trump revolution, particularly in the nomination phase where I uh, explain in my book, The Making of the President 2016, the vital role played by InfoWars.com watchers and listeners in the Trump revolution. It truly was a tsunami. Uh, and my hat's off to Alex Jones for his courage. Once he made the decision to support Donald J. Trump, he never wavered. Uh, when they threw the Billy Bush tape at Trump, when they threw all kinds of false allegations, when things looked dim, when there was no guarantee of victory, Alex Jones was not a sunshine soldier. Uh, he was there, he was solid, and he uh, rang the uh, alerts uh, to what was afoot. Um, he was aggressive on the attack in terms of exposing the crimes of Bill and Hillary Clinton. Uh, and therefore, yes, uh, I am proud to be here on InfoWars with a fellow warrior, Alex Jones, and the entire crew at InfoWars. Um, very big news today when it comes to uh, Russia uh, and the phony narrative put forward by the intelligence community, whose motive is quite clear. You see, Hillary Clinton promised them an expansion of the proxy war in Syria. They were really wringing their hands with glee. My God, a no-fly zone. We could even have World War III. Uh, and the globalists and neocons who infect the Central Intelligence Agency and the other 17 agencies that are involved in intelligence collection, including the NSA, have been opposed to Donald Trump and his quest for peace uh, in the region from the beginning. Now, I've known Donald Trump for 40 years. He has no illusions about the Russian gulag. He has no illusions about the rottenness of the Russian system where gays and Christians and women and Jews are persecuted, are oppressed. He has no illusions about Vladimir Putin's past as a KGB agent. He knows that Putin is a killer, but he also understands that peace uh, requires uh, some negotiation and some effort. Perhaps, just perhaps, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin can negotiate uh, a just peace uh, in the region. Given Assad's alleged gassing of children, given the fact that uh, the opponents of Assad are propped up by ISIS and the Saudis, while Assad is propped up by the Russians and he's funding Hezbollah and Hamas and worse, we have no friends in this conflict, folks. There is nothing here that is worth dropping uh, a drop of American blood or spending a borrowed American dollar. This explains why the intelligence agencies have invented the false Russian narrative. It diverts attention from the Podesta brothers and the Clintons' own business activities in Russia, the phony bank deal, the phony gas deal, the phony stock deal. Once again, Dr. Jerry Corsi has reported on this uh, both at World Net Daily and now at Infowars.com. So their strategy was brilliant. Divert from your own ties to Putin uh, by falsely claiming 
Donald Trump is in bed with the Russians. It's a farce. And even factcheck.org, which is a liberal-leaning, or I should say establishment-leaning media organization financed by the Walter Annenberg Foundation, even they found that the allegations by Congressman Adam Schiff against me and others uh, involved with Trump, but principally me, that I knew about Podesta's email hacking in advance, false, or that I knew the scope and timing and extent of the WikiLeaks disclosures about Hillary, also false. So I give credit to the folks at factcheck.org, and I thank you for joining us here at InfoWars. Welcome back to InfoWars. I'm Roger Stone, New York Times best-selling author, uh, a bon vivant, man about town, um, and a liberty-oriented American and loyal supporter of Donald Trump. You know, it does pain me to offer criticisms of the Trump administration. They are not at any time criticisms of the president. I'm deeply invested uh, in his success. I believe he is the one man who can make America great again. Uh, and therefore, when I see people in his administration uh, disserving him, you know, in the beginning, I am loath to talk about it, but ultimately it has to be raised because this is our last best chance to save Western civilization, to save American culture and the American system as we know it. Uh, his election is a miracle, nothing short of it. I believe that Hillary Clinton and her allies spent as much as $2 billion uh, in hard dollars. This doesn't count the soft money that Mr. Soros was spending with uh, whacked out groups like Media Matters for America and other front groups that were designed to hide the Clinton's crimes uh, and uh, assault the Clinton's critics. Uh, now you have the question of mainstream media. The constant negative drumbeat by CNN on Donald Trump. What was that worth in terms of commercial dollars because it was de facto advertising? The answer is hundreds of millions of dollars. So Donald Trump was outflanked in the old media, and now we learn he was also outflanked in the new media that the barons of Silicon Valley were monkeying with his algorithms uh, and blocking his communications. Many of you know firsthand uh, about the new censorship that's being unleashed against conservatives, libertarians, and any supporters of Donald Trump. For decades, many of us on the right were, you know, we were unconcerned about the venture capital on the left that was flowing to tech companies. But once established, many of these large companies began a symbiotic relationship with the deep state. Facebook, Twitter, Google, uh, and their property YouTube have all but locked up social media interactions in our country today. The old antitrust description fits most appropriately. Monopolies, monopolies, these are left-leaning organizations and they are tilting public discourse in the direction of censorship via a variety of nefarious yet hidden methods. Terms have been invented to describe what they're up to. Censorship activities conducted by the tech left are called throttling, uh, shadow bans, troll bots, SJW puppets, fake news flagging, and many other. In fact, new terms are being invented every single day. All of this activity boils down to a single objective, and that is to strangle dissent and to strangle the alternative voices like Infowars.com. We at Stone Cold Truth have watched our audience, as they have at Infowars, grow and grow and grow in the final months of the election. Finally, we were able to reach millions of people. And there is no doubt that this was a key factor in the upset victory of Donald Trump. You see, using rugged American individualism, we have stood up to the voices 
and the ideology and frankly the abuse of the left but in their desperation now the tech left is starting to slant the playing field further and further to the point of censorship censorship of course was a, a tactic used by both hitler and stalin it is a it is a clear indicator of a coming totalitarian state see i think the wackiest left wing group in the country people as irresponsible and dishonest and corrupt as say david brock they should not be banned on the internet they should not be banned or throttled back on uh facebook everyone should have a voice that is the fundamental bedrock principle of our first amendment and our american constitution and that is what we're fighting about in this particular fight the left have professional agitators by the thousands and brain trusts by the score they have deep pockets more money than they know what to do with and they're using it today to kill the liberty movement and try to kill off the presidency of Donald J Trump make no mistake about it this is the preparation for a silent coup that lies ahead that is how bitter and disappointed the globalists are in their giant multi billion dollar investment in Hillary Clinton the tech left is extinguishing the passion and volunteer spirit that we see so prevalent here at infowars.com using professional trolls to spread hate is another key tactic if you go to twitter today they are attacking my wife attacking my family attacking my dog attacking my hair attacking my glasses attacking my clothing it grows tedious very tedious uh they say that i am uh, all kinds of things but they never mention new york times best selling author they never mention the fact that i am a proud veteran of the campaigns of both ronald reagan and donald trump they would have you believe that i am lucifer himself when it is the left that is demonistic it is the left who are agnostic it is the left who believe in the godless religion of globalism now uh we understand that the left is in a panic and we are very clear about what the strategy uh and the game plan of the tech left is and this is not going to go down the way they think it is because they are subject to anti trust law in this administration they are subject to uh the dictates and rules passed by congress and signed into law by the president anyone who thinks that alex jones or uh anyone else uh, uh who is involved in alternative media is going to take this sitting down that we are going to uh give up and surrender without a bloody fight does not understand the nature of our determination to take our country back now if said if attorney general sessions would uh stop examining those states that have legally approved recreational marijuana through the process of constitutional amendment sometimes in many states requiring a 60% margin and focused on the criminal and antitrust and tortious interference of the internet giants there is no question in my mind that there is appropriate legal action there why is this so important in all candor the chances of donald trump being reelected in 2020 are zero if the vibrancy of alternative media is cut off if we return to the days 
in which mainstream media held an absolute monopoly on the dissemination of political information. You see, in 1963, for example, there were only three networks, and therefore, if they didn't report something, it didn't happen. This is why uh, I have believed that the cover-up uh, in the murder of President John F. Kennedy was so easy to perpetrate. The mainstream media of the day was able, able to easily control the narrative. As you will find in my book, The, the, uh, the Man Who Killed Kennedy, The Case Against LBJ, FBI agents actually showed up at the Daily Newspaper in Dallas and dictated the stories for page one and killed stories that did not agree with the government's immediate narrative that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone and he killed John Kennedy. Now, today, such a claim could never be sustained because of the vibrancy of the internet and alternative media. There would be, instead of one Zapruder film of the Kennedy assassination, there would be hundreds of cell phone cameras recording the event for history, making a cover-up almost impossible. That gives you a graphic example of why it is crucial that this fight be fought and that the Trump administration understand the stakes and what is uh, at hand in terms of this challenge. This is a life and death struggle, not only for the future of the liberty movement, but the future of the country itself. This is certainly, in raw political terms, a crucial fight for the future of the Trump presidency. Does son-in-law Jared Kushner understand this challenge? Or is he being lulled to sleep by the uh, Silicon Valley supplicants now taking the trek to New York to wine and dine the presidential son-in-law and his wife? Now, before we leave this segment, uh, I want to put in a plug for uh, a product that I have now just tried. Uh, and this is the Caveman formula, available at the Infowars.com store. This is the true cutting edge of paleo nutrition. This is uh, a special formula that utilizes seven different superfoods uh, with a super high quality bone broth. The, the uh, benefits are extraordinary. It torques up your immune system. It, it uh, provides for clearer skin, for stronger bones, for overall health. This is an ancient formula that has been souped up with some modern ingredients, uh, and it is a really above the, the anything else you can find uh, on the commercial market when it comes to a, an overall nutrition um, that uh, helps build the immune system uh, and also ha helps kill the free, free radicals uh, that are a result of eating processed food and breathing polluted air. So uh, I recommend this product. It is 33% off Retail today at the store, at the Infowars.com store. And you're not just getting a great product, folks. You are funding the fight for freedom. You are funding the First Amendment in action. You are funding the tip of the spear, Infowars.com. This fight is not winnable without the uh, leadership and the voice of Alex Jones and so many who are there uh, on the team at Infowars.com. And this is our oxygen. You see, Infowars doesn't have big multinational corporate sponsors who tell Alex Jones what he can and cannot say on the air. No, we're true to ourselves. 
And that's why your support at the Infowars.com store is so crucial to the future fight for freedom. There are no products there that don't have hundreds of testimonials in terms of their efficacy and their quality. Uh, and of course, you can buy uh, the making of the president 2016, uh, the story of how Donald Trump orchestrated an American revolution right there at the Infowars.com store. This historic book lays the groundwork on the entire Russian myth, on the phony narrative created by John Podesta to distract from his own business activities with the Kremlin, uh, and to uh, cast questions about the legitimacy uh, and the uh, uh, stability of the Trump administration. There is no Russian collusion. Even Congressman Adam Schiff, a man who I said from the beginning was full of Schiff, even he is now in retreat. The hard evidence that they promised us existed seems to have gone missing. And now, with the criminal activities of Susan Rice, well, the, the, the focus is back where it belonged on those who use the Russian collusion myth as a rationale, as a legal justification for spying on the president. I predict to you here and now that we will learn that the surveillance of Donald Trump was broader and longer than we have been told thus far. But the FBI director and the NSA director, Admiral Rogers, both testified under oath that there was no surveillance of the president. That turns out to be perjury, a lie. And uh, as we learned here at Infowars.com only weeks ago, the government has had an active program called Dragnet that has been monitoring and recording the telephone conversations of some 600 plus prominent Americans, some other not so prominent Americans, but that list included Donald J. Trump, who was monitored from his New York office, his New York apartment, his Palm Beach apartment, his Palm Beach country club or golf club, and several other Trump resorts. Folks, the deep state is busted, and they know it. And that's why this hysterical attack on the media outlets like Infowars.com who are letting the American people know what is really going on. I thank you for your support of InfoWars. I thank you support of InfoWars store to keep the, the uh, theme of freedom on the airwaves. I'll be right back. Many thanks. Welcome back to InfoWars. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Roger Stone, sitting in for my friend, Alex Jones. We are, uh, without any question, at one of the most exciting times in American history. The uh, Soros-funded group uh, with the highfalutin name Fight for the Future, FFTF, claiming to be for Internet freedom and civil liberties, is actually attempting to achieve the exact opposite. They want to shut down free communications on the alternative right. Pencil neck geeks like David Brock uh, are uh, launching an assault uh, on our very freedom of expression. And we have no intention of standing for it and no intention of not fighting this effort on every front. I wanna take a minute to pay tribute to two of my colleagues Jack Posobiec, who has now joined the Rebel, is their new Washington, D.C. Co correspondent. Jack is uh, an important foot soldier in the Trump revolution, one of the key figures behind Citizens for Trump, an independent organization. And I salute Jack on his new assignment. And my hat's off to Mike Cernovich, a patriot, a freedom fighter, uh, and the man who learned uh, and passed on to the media that um, Susan Rice 
had illegally unmasked a number of key Trump associates, myself included, uh, in her efforts to sift uh, intelligence information for political reasons. Now, Susan Rice has a history as a proven liar. If you read my book on Benghazi, you know that she lied about the idea that a mob, a rabble, attacked our mission in Benghazi, incensed over an anti-Islamic video uh, that was allegedly shown once in Turkey. So we have a habitual liar, and now I agree with Senator Rand Paul's notion that it's time